Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord when we venerate Him in the mystery of His death and resurrection. And through the celebration of the Paschal mystery in word and sacrament, He renews our faith and hope in his internal life with the Father. Father, as we share in the light of your glory, through your Son, the light of the world, sanctify this new fire and inflame in us new hope. Purify our minds this Easter celebration and bring us to the feast of eternal life. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the light of Christ Rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Christ, our light. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray the collect of the day together. Almighty God, this night explodes with the radiance of the risen Christ. Set us ablaze with the power of your love and propel us into the world to live and proclaim the gospel of the living Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 11. For surely you know that when you were baptized into union with Christ Jesus, you were baptized into union with his death. By our baptism then, we were buried with him and shared his death in order that, just as Christ was raised from death by the glorious power of the Father, so also we might live a new life. For since we have become one with him in dying as he did, in the same way, we shall also be one with him by being raised to life as he was. And you know that our old being has been put to death with Christ Jesus on the cross, in order that the power of the sinful self might be destroyed, so that we should no longer be slaves of sin. 
For when a person dies, he is set free from the power of sin. Since we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that Christ has been raised from death and will never die again. Death will no longer rule over him. And so, because he died, sin has no power over him. And now he lives his life in fellowship with God. In the same way, you are to think of yourselves as dead. So as far as sin is, con is concerned, but living in the fellowship with God through Christ Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16, reading from verses 1 to 8. The Resurrection After the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices to go and anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning, at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they said to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? It was a very large stone. Then they looked up and saw that the stone had already been rolled back. So they entered the tomb, where they saw a young man sitting on the right, wearing a white robe and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. Look, here is the place where they put him. Now go and give this message to his disciples, including Peter. He is going to Galilee, ahead of you. There you will see him, just as he had told you. 
So they went out and ran from the tomb, distressed and terrified. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a right spirit within me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus had suffered horrendous torture and an unimaginable death. Then his body is taken away by Joseph of Arimathea. That it's a bit odd in itself because traditionally the family would have taken the body. But this stranger comes along and gets permission to take the body and the family are not included in the plans. Mary is completely sidelined. In chapter 15 it says, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph was watching and saw where the body of Jesus was placed. And what about the disciples? Had they experienced a happy ever after ending? Far from it. The disciples were depressed and terrified and had run away, gone into hiding. As far as everyone was concerned, family and friends, Jesus was gone. End of story. Then the resurrection happens. Alleluia, we think. Everyone is happy now. But no, look again at the story. First, there is an, ex an anxiety. Verse 4, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And then verse 5, and they were alarmed. And finally, verse 8, so they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seen them. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. So I ask you, how do we address our fears? How do we console one another during these difficult times? We, like the woman who encountered Christ at the tomb, must have responded by going forth in joy, confident that it's the risen Christ who sends us, accompanies us and reassures us. As we experience physical distancing, self-isolation, quarantine and economic uncertainty, we are compelled to find a new way to proclaim the good news that Christ is risen. As Peter tells us, always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. 1 Peter 3 verse 15 Now, more than ever, we must be Easter people who proclaim that Christ is risen risen. He has saved us from our sins and he is with us always. From Mark's gospel, both the fear and the joy that was present among the first witnesses of the resurrection and continues to be our feelings today when we seek to witness Christ who is among us. Jesus reassures us with the words, do not be afraid. What is the source of fear that the woman experienced? Perhaps it is the fear that their credibility will be questioned and that the message will be rejected by those who receive it. Perhaps they wonder if what they have heard and seen isn't true and was only imagined. Perhaps they fear that they would be harmed by the forces that brought about the death of Jesus. And perhaps it was simply the fear of the unknown. No doubt there were many reasons for their fears that Easter morning. Yet, at the same time, their fear was temp tempered by an immense joy. Suddenly, in the midst of their profound grief, they encountered Christ who tells them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers 
to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Matthew 28, 10. And the joy that springs from this encounter compels them to go and proclaim the good news. It is a joy that cannot possibly be contained. And so they run to find the apostles who had taken shelter in fear for their lives and tell them, He is risen! What a joy rooted in hope, a joy steeped in the awareness that God's love knows no bounds. Like the woman who encountered the risen Christ, they too are filled with fear. We fear. We fear that our proclamation will be rejected and not considered credible, especially in times of prosperity when people feel that they do not need God or in times of desperation and suffering as we are currently experiencing today with the COVID-19 crisis. With the surprising pandemic, many are fearful of the long-term job loss and are worried about how they will pay their rent, feed their children and meet their responsibilities with diminished financial resources. For some, such as those who are in hospital and long-term care facilities, their fear of isolation is particularly increased when they are told that they cannot receive visitors. Parents are struggling to find ways to explain the crisis of the coronavirus to their children, whose daily routines have been radically changed. For us in the Christian community and in other parts of our global village, we are faced with a prospect of not being able to gather together in our parishes to celebrate Easter, which is the heart of the entire liturgical year. Questions arise about how to mark the Easter Tridium in our families in meaningful ways. How can we live as a truly domestic church at home during this time of crisis? As people of faith, our fear gives way to joy in our daily encounter with Christ in the Eucharist, in spiritual communion, in the scriptures, in our prayer, in devotions, and in compassionate and loving service to one another. And these encounters, even if by social media, provide us with the courage and conviction of our faith, so that even in the most challenging times, we can boldly proclaim the death and resurrection of Christ through our words and actions. Jesus has set us free from sin and death, and we share with him the same mission prophesied by Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and of recovery of sight to the blind. Let the oppressed go free and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Isaiah 61 verses 1 and 2. When we address our fears through the eyes of faith, we are free to bring about an authentic and lasting spiritual and social transformation by addressing the injustices around us, but also by discerning the sign of the times. For God's presence is active and saving at each moment of our daily lives. As we celebrate Easter, we are reminded of the Paschal candle from which the candle given to us at our baptism was lit, making us bearers of Christ's light, sent forth as missionary disciples to bring his light to the world. As Easter people, we have encountered the risen Christ. We acknowledge him and we proclaim him. He has called us and we are free to follow him. Let us do so ever more faithfully, keeping our eyes fixed on his light, which shines on our path. And let us go forth to tell the Lord's brothers and sisters that the kingdom is near, that he himself is the kingdom risen and alive for all eternity. So in conclusion, dear people of God, each Eucharistic celebration, 
when we are dismissed with the words, go in peace to love and serve the Lord, we are, in a certain sense, reenacting what happened at the empty tomb on Easter Sunday over 2,000 years ago with Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. These women encountered Christ and were sent forth with fear and joy to tell others. And they went forth as witnesses, as disciples on a mission, missionary disciples. And so this Easter, as we proclaim, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us go forth in joy. Amen. Dear friends, this water will be used to remind us of our baptism, so let us ask God to bless it and to keep us faithful to the spirit that God has given us. Father, we give you thanks for your gift of life-giving water through the waters of the Red Sea. You brought your people out of slavery in Egypt, and the waters of Jordan, your son was anointed with the Holy Spirit. As he hung on the cross, Water and blood flowed from his side. Through the waters of baptism, you delivered us from sin and raised us to new life. We ask you now to bless this water to our use. May it remind us of our baptism, that renewed by your Spirit, we may rejoice with all who are baptized this Easter. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, tonight is the night of nights for which we have been preparing during Lent. We have come to know more clearly the love of Christ for us. On Palm Sunday, we went to Jerusalem with him. We followed him day by day until on Good Friday, we stood at the foot of the cross as he died for us in the fullness of his love. Tonight we rejoice in that great love. As we celebrate the Paschal mystery of his death and resurrection, we remember that at our baptism, we were buried with Christ and raised with him to newness of life. If you have your lighted candles, we hold them to remind us that we share in this light of Christ. Let us now show our thankfulness by renewing the solemn pledges which were then made to renounce the world the flesh and the devil, to believe the Christian faith and to keep God's holy will and commandments. I ask you therefore, do you renounce the wickedness of the world, its greed for possessions, power and status? Yes, I renounce them all. Do you renounce all that corrupts our human nature, pride, selfishness and lust? Yes, I renounce them all. Do you renounce the devil, the author of all evil and the father of lies? Yes, I renounce him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the maker of all? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, the redeemer of the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, the giver of life? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Will you faithfully play your part in the life and fellowship of the church? With God's help, I will. Will you gladly obey the commandments of God and seek to do his will? With God's help, I will. Will you, by your life and witness, share in the church's mission to proclaim the gospel and to set forward peace and justice among all people? With God's help, I will. Almighty God, who gives you the will to do these things, grant you also the power to perform them, that he may complete the work which he has begun in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Litany of Redemption O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. 
for his mercy endures forever. Who has loved us from all eternity? For his mercy endures forever. Who only does great wonders? For his mercy endures forever. Who by his excellent wisdom made the heavens? For his mercy endures forever. Who laid out the earth above waters? For his mercy endures forever. Who has made great lights? For his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule the day? For his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night? For his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh? For his mercy endures forever. Who called Abraham from Haran? For his mercy endures forever. Who brought out Israel from Egypt? For his mercy endures forever. With a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, for his mercy endures forever. Who divided the Red Sea in two parts? For his mercy endures forever. And made Israel to go through the midst of it. For his mercy endures forever. Who led his people through the wilderness? For his mercy endures forever. Who remembered us when we were in trouble? For his mercy endures forever. Who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven? For his mercy endures forever and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For his mercy endures forever. Who by his cross and passion redeemed the world? For his mercy endures forever. And has washed us from our sins in his blood. For his mercy endures forever. Who on the third day rose from the dead? For his mercy endures forever and has given us the victory, for his mercy endures forever. Who ascended upon high, for his mercy endures forever. And open wide for us the everlasting doors, for his mercy endures forever. Who sits on the right hand of God, for his mercy endures forever. And ever lives to make intercession for us, for his mercy endures forever. For the Lord our God is a merciful God who loves all that he has made. And to him is due all glory, honor and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever, world without end. Amen. The Prayers of the Church Father in heaven, we praise you that on this night Christ rose from the dead. We thank you for his triumph over sin and death and for his gift of eternal life. We remember before those who have died in great hope of the resurrection. Unite us with them in your unending joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and all Christian people that we may live as those who believe in the victory of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who at this season are receiving Christ's new life by water and the Spirit. May they be able to recognize the risen Christ in us, their brothers and sisters in the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide all who govern the nations of the earth. Help them to know what is right and to do it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer or are troubled. Give them good friends to comfort them and grant them healing and the knowledge of your Son in his victorious passion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, Lord God, sovereign over all, because you have taken your great power and begun to reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. 
we will rejoice and be glad in it. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Peace be with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus, may all that is in you flow into me. May your body and blood be my food and my drink. May your passion and death be my strength and life. Jesus, with you by my side, enough has been given. May the shelter I seek be the shadow of your cross. Let me not run from the love which you offer, but hold me safe from the forces of evil. On each of my dyings, shed your light and love. Keep calling to me until that day comes when, with your saints, I may praise you forever. Amen. And the blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia.